What's up everybody, I hope you're all doing good. Today I decided to make a video because going through my hard drives, I came across a clip from last spring in California running one of the sickest bomb runs out there. It's the South Yuba at about 4,000 TFS, which is juicy, but it's so much fun. But one of those days we actually had a moment go a little sideways where Evan got stuck in a hole and he did have to swim in one of probably one of the worst spots to swim on the river, especially at those flows. But I was able to rope him out before he had to swim any of the gnarly stuff. But watching the clip, I was kind of reminded when watching watching it that there were a few things in the moment that I thought about just kind of things that I've learned over the years whether it's just kind of things that I've kind of figured out for myself or been taught from certain people and I realized that in the clip there are a few things that aren't always general knowledge or just useful information that people just don't think about and can be really helpful when it comes to moments like this where you have to help someone out so I decided to make kind of like a little breakdown of kind of step by step on things that I was thinking about and steps that I took to allow me to help Evan get out and not have things go potentially worse. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play the clip. You guys can kind of watch it, get a sense of what happened, how I was able to rope them out, and maybe see if you can kind of pick up on a few things I'm probably gonna talk about. Oh my god, that could have gone so much worse. That hole. <sighs> so a little context on why this was not a good spot to have to swim is that that hole is right above this rapid and this rapid, which means that, that those would be awful to have to swim down. The first thing I'm going to talk about is one of the more important things I think in a lot of ways, and that is hit your line. There's nothing worse than having the person in front of you get in trouble, whether it's get stuck in the hole, fall off line, get pinned, whatever it is, but then you get completely distracted and not hit your line, and then you are also in trouble. There's no point on snowballing down the group where the first person messes up, second person messes up, third, fourth, on and on and on. It's important that you hit your line, and then you're able to help your friend or whoever it is that's in trouble. So the second thing is I didn't tell Adrian to go right at the hole and the reason for that is he was already too committed to the line that we had just done or started and if I had told him to try to go right at the hole I probably would have had him drop right into the meat of the hole with Evan so instead I let him hit his line and once he was through then I told the rest of the group to go right at the hole and the reason for that is because they still had enough time to make it without potentially dropping into the hole with Evan. The third point I wanted to talk about, and this is actually probably one of the more important things about this situation and just in general when it comes to when something goes wrong in the river. Once Adrian was through the rapid and he was below the feature, I knew that there was someone in the water that could help Evan if he swam or needed help from someone in a boat. But by knowing that, I knew that there was no reason for me to stay in the water, so I immediately headed to shore to get out. There is no reason if someone is getting stuck in a hole or whatever it is for you to stay in your boat until they swim and then try to get out. Because a lot of times when people do that, it's then too late and the person usually will have drifted past them before they're able to get out and grab their rope. So if there was already someone in their boat below the feature, whatever it is, someone's in trouble, like here, make sure you get out and you're the person with the rope ready to help if they do have to come out of their boat. So again, don't wait for someone to swim to assume that you need to get out and grab your rope. Just If there are people in the water, go ahead and get out, grab your rope. If they get out of the hole, great. If not, you're there and you're ready. Did you see my next point? Did you see it? Hold on, I'll play it one more time and then see if you can notice it. Keep your rope in front of your seat. There is no reason to 
ever have your rope behind the seat. It's harder to access, takes a lot more time to get to, and it's often a lot harder to get out quickly. Whether it's class one or class five, I not only always have my rope, but I always have my rope in front of the seat. And by having it there, it's quicker to access, and I can get to my rope a lot faster and get it out of the boat and not waste any valuable seconds to be able to help someone out. This is a little bit of a smaller point, but it can sometimes affect whether or not you're able to rope someone successfully. And that is always try to aim just over them and have the rope land on them. A lot of people, when they try to just get the bag perfectly to them, unless they're really close, a lot of times, sometimes that can mean that you throw the rope too short and then the person can't get it. So me personally, I always try to land it just past them, go straight over their head so they can grab that rope and the rope lands directly on top of them. So this is another really important point and something that I remember thinking in the moment but also watching realizing how important it was and that is I knew that I would not be able to pull him in by being on top of that rock. It is extremely important that you find somewhere that you can actually put your feet up against because don't underestimate, even if it's slow moving water, how much weight you're gonna be holding and how much force that person has. If I had stayed on top of that rock, Evan would have most definitely pulled me in and then we both would have been swimming down that awful rapid. So I knew in that moment, and it's extremely important whenever you rope someone to find somewhere you can brace yourself up against the rock with your feet and not get pulled in. My next and probably final point, unless you are the only person that can pull that person in, hold on to the rope and stay where you are because they might slip and fall back into the water or maybe they don't get a good foothold. So you wanna make sure you're holding that rope until you either pull them all the way in or another person like Adrian in this situation can get to them and pull them out of the water. So hold on to that rope until they're completely out of the water whether you pull them in or someone else can get to them. But don't let it go because you never know if they could fall back in or slip off the rocks they're standing on. So the one criticism I have of myself in this situation, now sometimes it's not always easy to do everything right. In this situation, the one thing I didn't do was take the carabiner off of my rope. And sometimes that could be an issue if you were to hit someone with the bag and the carabiner's there, you might knock out a tooth, cut their face, or just hit them in the face with a piece of metal, which would make you not near as good of a friend. That being said, I didn't take the carabiner off because I was focused on making sure I get out quickly and able to help him. Whereas if I had been sitting there with my cold hands trying to get that carabiner off, I might have missed my chance to throw the rope to him. So I'm not saying that these are the perfect ways, these are just the ways that I do and the things I think about whenever I need to help someone out. And I just find all these things put together, whether it's stuff I've learned over the years or someone has taught these things to me, I just find all those things put together really help me be in the best position possible to help someone when things go wrong. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe out there, and I'll catch you guys on the water. Peace.